So glad you could come along once again. We are joined, as always, by Greg Angert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, which includes Evening Star Cafe and Planet Wine in the Del Rey neighborhood, also Columbia Firehouse in Old Town. Greg, a food and wine sommelier of the year. Very good to see you. You too. What do we have on tap this week? Well, you know, uh, for Beer of the Week, we like to kind of be ahead of the curve a little bit and showcase things that are, that are uh, kind of new and fun and kind of getting uh, great buzz. So for that, we have a, uh, a beer from Perennial Artisan Ales, um, a small brewery uh, and tasting room located in St. Louis, Missouri, in the shadow of Anheuser-Busch and Bev, of course. Um, they are a, uh, a little brewery that opened in September of 2011. Um, so they're, wow, they're very, very young. young and um, just started shipping small amounts of their small batch beers uh, to the D.C. area, Northern Virginia, uh, Maryland as well. So really, really psyched to, to have these guys. And what they typically make are <clears throat> variations on the Saison style. So they have a beautiful um, Saison with Britannomyces that's kind of funky um, called Aria. They have a, a dry Belgian kind of blonde ale called Hamelbeer. Uh, they make a, a wonderful chamomile-infused saison called saison de lis. Uh, but then they also do some other cool stuff. And, of course, what, you know, one of the things they like to do is incorporate local ingredients. So Missouri is uh, very well known for black walnuts, probably more so than any place in the world. In fact, I think 70% of the global black walnut production comes from the state of Missouri. Um, the walnuts themselves are amazing. They're a delicacy. They're fantastic. And so... True to form, they have crafted a beer that incorporates the Missouri black walnut, and it's called Black Walnut Dunkel, um, which is not a dunkel uh, in the sense of a dark German-style lager, but actually a dunkel Weizen, okay. which is a dark um, Hefeweizen or, or Bavarian-style wheat beer uh, with some black walnuts. All right. Tasty. Without further ado. Ooh. Oh, that's real nice. Obviously a food beer. It that's real well. nice. Yeah, that's good beer. You get that slight hint of Saison, but it's very mild. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And a little um, bit of dry, like oily complexity in the finish. Tasty. Definitely tasty. 6.6% uh, alcohol. Uh, Bavarian Hefeweizen uh, yeast strain gives you some bright fruit, a little banana here, um, but also some darker fruits like um, you know, raisin, plum, almost like a cherry quality to it. Clovey, almost cinnamon-like spice. And then... Black walnuts are known for being kind of dry, so they dry this out a little bit, and for having a touch of a kind of a smoky quality, um, which works nicely with the clovey spice effect. At one of these places where they hold your hand while you make beer, I've done it a few times, it's a total blast if, if you've never done it. Uh, one of the people on the uh, next spot over from us was brewing ginger in their beer, and they uh -huh. had the ginger in, I think, a cheesecloth bag. Yeah, yeah. How do you, do you just throw the nuts in there, or do you... Uh, do you have to clean them off or, yeah, they or always, scrub them? Yeah. Or what do you put them in or how does that I, work? I'm not exactly sure how they do it, but I can say that um, you always want to kind of, um, you know, create an uh, aseptic kind of solution. And a lot of times what you do is you soak the ingredient in vodka, um, which will not have, because it's kind of, it's clear and it's flavorless. So this is just to anesthetize it, make sure that it's sterile. Uh, you're kind of sterilizing it and then you'll add it in because... Yeah, anything that's coming naturally could bring with it wild yeast and bacteria that you might not want to incorporate uh, into the beer. Oftentimes, it'll be milled. You know, you're not just throwing, like, ginger root in, but right. you'll, you'll grind it up into a, into a powder, and you'll add it that way. So I'd imagine they're, 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 you know, sterilizing the black walnuts, um, grinding them up into a powder of sorts, and then contributing them. And in this case, I'd imagine it's coming in during the boil, although it's, it's typical to also add certain ingredients post-fermentation if you want to get more of the aroma out of them kind of infusing it into the finished beer rather than brewing with the ingredient. Is it unusual that such a young brewery is available, um, I mean, St. Louis is not exactly uh, the moon away, right, right. but that it's, that it's already available here? I think it is, it, it used to be super unusual, um, but there's a lot of new um, approaches to craft beer production and distribution. Uh, the old market standpoint was that, you know, you produce beer and you take care of your local market first and in volume. It's definitely what DC Brow has done and Port City has done and Three Stars is doing, you know, so that's what you see. But then 
a lot of times now, you know, brewers that are, are, are exper- making more kinds of beer, um, less volume, uh, typically making more expensive styles of beer, and in less volume, they tend to be more into kind of spreading their beer out um, to a larger audience. And that's why some of these breweries, like if you think about like Anchorage Brewing Company out of Alaska or Stillwater, which is one of our local gypsy brewers, they actually have their beers distributed through importers because an importer is already shipping beer all over the country. And so they can kind of piggyback what little beer they have onto shipments that go everywhere. So that's why you'll see beers from Anchorage, Alaska, um, as, you know, for Anchorage Brewing Company, we've done them before. Yeah. Um, you know, they're scarce everywhere, but they're just as scarce in, in, in Alaska as they are in New York City or Chicago. So you're kind of spreading it around. So I think that's the, the model that Perennial is kind of going after. Sort of like Pliny the Elder. You can find it around Santa Rosa pretty easily, but go yeah, too much you farther see away. It, yeah. With these guys, I think rather than just saying, you know, we're going to make sure that we take care of St. Louis and then Missouri and then, you know, uh, you know, adjacent states there in they are looking to kind of spread themselves out a little thinner um, and never intending to be always um, supremely available. You know, you'll see these beers kind of come in and go away, come back in in cycles, which is fun because it keeps them exciting, keeps them new, um, and keeps them scarce, which is important. What is the best way, if you go somewhere like St. Louis, I mean, you think Anheuser-Busch, obviously, and when I was in St. Louis covering the Nationals last fall, uh, I went to Anheuser-Busch, uh, but I also uh, read up on Google about Schlafly and, and a couple of the others. I didn't have time to get to them. Is just Googling <coughs> craft beer St. Louis the best way to do that? Are there particular sites? There are. I mean, um, what's, what's really cool, and I, I'm not exactly sure if St. Louis has this yet, but I wouldn't be surprised. It seems that every city now with a major beer scene is starting to have their own kind of beer scene site. Like in D.C., we have dcbeer.com, which is fantastic. Um, and anybody who's coming to D.C. should check that site out first. Um, so you kind of, yeah, you know, Google works for everything, but look for that. Look for, like, these places that are, are homegrown um, kind of websites to tell you information on that. Uh, and then the ones that I always check out are ratebeer.com and then also beeradvocate.com. And they have great directories um, kind of state by state and then city by city. Go in, see what's there, and see what other people say about what's there. So you don't just know that there's 10 breweries, but what are the ones you shouldn't miss, you know? Because um, you mentioned some great ones, you know. First of all, Anheuser Busch going there is fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's a window a lot, on the pass. It's really cool. Um, it's an amazing experience. You know. Then of course, uh, Schlafly, St. Louis Brewery. They the first craft brewer um, to start in 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 St. Louis. They make fantastic things. They're good friends of ours. Then you've got now like places like Perennial Artists and Ales, and also another one that's fantastic is called Urban Chestnut. And they actually, Urban Chestnut's cool. They 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 concentrate on full flavored kind of German inspired craft beer. Um, so not necessarily as um, crazy and nuanced as these beers, but fantastically flavorful, classic styles. Sounds like a modern-day rock band, too. Urban, yeah, Urban Chestnut. Chestnut yeah. Uh, boy, this must be versatile with food. Yeah, what yeah. would you pair this with? Well, I mean, just think about, like, the nuttiness quality. That just Think, think about dishes that incorporate nuts uh, in any way. Um, that's a great first start. So this can go with your, with your salad up front. Even a salad that has, like, a vinegar-based dressing would be fantastic with this. Um, I'm thinking, like... Uh, Game birds, you know, obviously, like, it'd be awesome with duck, but also squab and uh, pheasant, things like that. Things that are kind of earthy, but also somewhat kind of light and airy at the same time. Um, roasted pork tenderloin would be mm-hmm. phenomenal. Um, and then even, and then this can go all the way to dessert, too. It's got some cocoa notes. It's got that nutty black walnut quality, hints of smoke. There's a little banana. Um, so you could do this with, with any number of, of desserts as well, you know, sundaes and things like that. Uh, before we go, uh, last week you mentioned uh, we got a quick update on Blue Jacket uh, down by National Stadium that that will be open late May, early June. Mm-hmm. We talked a while back about uh, Red Apron now open in Maryfield. It's been at Union Market uh, for quite some time, but that second location now open. Months ago you told me about something <laughs> yeah. that really made my mouth water. Is it, we're going. We're going now. Yeah, C- we're is open. it CBGB's yeah. or is that the old no. New York nightclub? Yeah, it was, the old yeah. New York night. and then I always get it wrong. There's, it's, it's an acronym for sure, um, and it's kind of hard to keep straight, but it's uh, GBD, uh, which stands for Golden Brown Delicious, okay. which is a sort uh, of close. culinary term in the kitchen. Like, if you want to make something perfect, you make it golden brown and delicious. Um, and it is our fried chicken and donuts uh, spot uh, with a fantastic bar that includes uh, almost 20 craft beers on tap and a cask. Um, fantastic wines on tap. 
amazing punches. That's kind of, and then, and then a huge brown spirit list. So um, a really cool place. We're up and running now. We're oh, yeah. oh, okay. Connecticut yeah. Avenue um, in DuPont uh, Circle, just south of the circle. Uh, and it is a, a fantastic place uh, for, for, for everything. And, uh, you know, we have uh, executive chef Kyle Bailey from Birch and Barley and Church Key, and he'll also be manning the kitchen over at Blue Jacket. He's doing his fried chicken thing at GBD. And then his wife, Tiffany McIsaac, who's the pastry chef for a neighborhood restaurant group, she's taking care of the donuts. And what's cool about this spot for us is it's open early and it's open late. So, you know, you can go in the morning, get donuts, coffees, great, great coffee program, um, fried chicken for lunch. And then in the evening, we're just a flat out great bar that happens to also have fried chicken and, and donuts. I think great things to, to eat while you're drinking. You could go in in the morning and stay all day. Stay all day, that's right. <laughs> if you've got a question for Greg about beer, um, the D.C. beer scene, uh, what's coming up with uh, uh, all sorts of things in the next few months, uh, send us an email at beeroftheweek at WTOP.com. Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Appreciate it. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly, and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another Beer of the Week.